The COP28 climate change conference has been going on in Dubai. There are more attendees than ever before. This includes a good number of CEOs from big oil and gas companies. The world is coming to understand something we've said for a long time, which is that we're going to need more of every kind of energy to satisfy the demands of an increasing global population and rising living standards. What more can Chevron do? Everything. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> well, I, 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 I re very respectfully would just say that you can't be outside of this initiative. That was John Kerry at the COP28 conference the other day. John Kerry is our special presidential envoy for climate, or climate czar as he's popularly known. He's criticizing Chevron for not doing enough on climate change. John Kerry isn't a convincing character to be preaching a change in how we use energy. I doubt he's ever had a membership of TSA PreCheck, because as long as anyone can remember, he's been flying on government aircraft or on one of his billionaire wife's private jets. So I don't really see him driving around looking for a charging station for his EV or worrying about higher energy costs with renewables. Chevron CEO Mike Worth had this to say about how his company thinks about delivering energy. I think has evolved uh, in, in many different quarters of the, the discussion on this. I think the, the reality that this is a transition, not a cliff, is something that, that certainly people are coming to recognize. And you know, one of the things I emphasize in discussions with policymakers is there are three big things that matter when you talk about energy. Affordable energy is essential for economic prosperity. Reliable energy is essential for national security. And environmental protection is essential because the world wants to see a sustainable planet. Today's big energy companies will be crucial to any efforts to curb CO2 emissions while continuing to deliver reliable, affordable energy. Here's X on CO Darren Woods talking about their investments in carbon capture. We're growing a low-carbon solutions business. We have contracts with three uh, different companies, an ammonia producer, an industrial gas producer, and a steel producer, to capture their emissions and sequester that emissions. That's 5 million tons per annum of emissions we'll reduce. Just to give you a sense for the size of that, that's the equivalent of replacing 2 million cars with EVs. That's all the EVs that are on the road in the U.S. today. There's a lot of good things happening, but the biggest weakness in the entire approach is how we deal with China. The problem with Democrats on climate change is that they'll take any deal. They are really weak negotiators. China is by far the biggest emitter of CO2. In the US, the administration is pursuing policies intended to get our CO2 emissions to zero by 2050. Meanwhile, China's stated goal is 10 years later, in 2060. And even that doesn't fully count their emissions. Here's John Kerry talking about China. Uh, once they had their national determined contribution, which is a 2060 date with uh, uh, a neutrality level, not even a reduction level in emissions, uh, President Xi proclaimed it, and there's very little capacity to move and change that. Uh -huh. so, so what we had to do was be creative and find ways to affect it but not actually change the, the, the proclaimed target levels, but have the effect through the things we agreed to work on together in certain measures that you would, in fact, reduce the emissions to a certain degree. It's just so weak. As John Kerry concedes in that video, China is following the path they want to. They're the world's biggest consumer of coal, and their growth in renewables is more about creating energy security not reducing emissions. Democrats are disingenuous on this vital issue. China's emissions are going up and they will continue to do so until they decide it's in their interest for that to change. Liberal politicians like John Kerry are so desperate to make China look like a negotiating partner that they take whatever China does as a positive. In any negotiation, you have to be able to walk away. Otherwise, you'll always get a bad deal. If reducing emissions really is critical to the future of humanity, as John Kerry would say, why is he so soft on China? Why so accepting of their continued burning of coal and construction of new coal burning power plants? 
And if it's not in fact an existential threat, why are we building all these solar panels and windmills? We should tell China, let us know when you're ready to cut emissions and we'll go at it together. Rich countries are much better equipped to manage the consequences of climate change than poor ones. Right now, our emissions go down and theirs go up. What's the point? Democrat policymakers are playing a strong hand weakly. China is not on board. We shouldn't pretend they are. If you're interested in learning more about the energy sector and interest rates, then don't forget to subscribe and follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Our handles are in the description box below. To find out more about what we're thinking, you can sign up for our twice-weekly blog at sl-advisors.com. We always love to hear from you. So if you have any comments or blog ideas, please leave them down below. I'm Simon Lack. Thank you for watching this video.